Hello Answers Now family and friends, Adam Dreyfus back for our weekly Parent Support University, which we're doing during the pandemic to help uh, <coughs> demystify some of the terms and uh, uh, phrases that we use in applied behavior analysis. Uh, I am Adam Dreyfus, I'm the co-founder and chief science officer for Answers Now. What is Answers Now? That's a good question. We are a mobile platform that you can just download uh, off of uh, the uh, uh, whatever app store you've got, whether it's the Android store, the Google Play store, the uh, Apple store. So you just go in, type answers now or finger answers now into your uh, search bin, uh, no space, just answers now, no space, and you'll get the, the little purple um, butterfly will pop up and you'll be able to download it. Uh, we connect you directly to your own clinician. That's the whole point of Answers Now, to reduce the barrier of entry for a parent or caregiver to connect to a clinician. Because right now the model is not great. <laughs> it's uh, You've got to be lucky enough to have a clinician near you. You've got to uh, be lucky enough to be near a clinic or a school. And uh, it's just we're not reaching all the folks that we need to reach. So Answers Now was born to put a BCBA in your pocket. Uh, what's a BCBA? A board certified behavior analyst. They are the experts on uh, ABA, the uh, Applied uh, Behavior Analysis, which is the... Uh, um, CDC has told us is the best intervention package for children and adults diagnosed with autism. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's true. Uh, I agree with the CDC on this one. Uh, and what we're doing here over the course of the pandemic is um, doing these weekly um, parent support universities uh, through the framework of the National Professional Development Center's evidence-based practices. Whoa, mouthful. That's exactly right. And that's part of what the problem is. So about 10 years ago, uh, the National Professional Development Center came together, and it's essentially a handful of universities, and looked at what do we know about how to help these kids with autism? Not what's the flavor of the week, the newest thing coming down, because if you're a parent or a caregiver, you know what I'm talking about. But every six months, um, oh, it's vaccines, oh, it's oxygen, oh, it's gluten, oh, it's uh, stem cells, oh, it's hyperbaric chambers, oh, it's squeezy vests, like it's just, it comes at you like crazy. So they compiled a list of the evidence-based practices, and that's what we've been doing. We've been going through those uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, we highly encourage you to go to their website and uh, sign up for their AFIRM modules, A-F-I-R-M. Um, that's where they have a list of all of the, um, that have them all listed, and they break them out and they teach the, it takes about two, two and a half hours to get through the module. Um, unfortunately, I still think People need a little bit more guidance, even though it's a great resource and it's a great way to learn stuff. So like today, we're going to be talking about social narratives, um, which is a different way of saying social stories. And I'm pretty sure the reason they refer to as social narratives is somebody copyrighted uh, the term social stories. And what that does is, and I know that everybody likes their little uh, emojis and emoticons, that makes Adam angry face. When you copyright something that is uh, super simple and you make it more difficult for parents to get the information they need. Um, so I might go back and forth, call them social stories and social narratives and happy to talk to a lawyer. Um, so social narratives are almost exactly what they sound like. Social stories, social narratives, where you basically, you take whatever it is that you want the child to learn and create um, uh, like a picture book uh, out of it. And most of the time you use I-based language. Um, because you want the kid to be sort of hearing it in their own uh, voice. Uh, so there's a really nice breakdown. I'm going to be kind of looking up a little bit because I've got some notes to make sure I get it right. Um, so they usually have a descriptive, a perspective sentence, a directive sentence, and an affirmative sentence. I'm going to go through those a little bit, but um, there's endless resources out there. You can just go into the Google and type in social stories or social narratives. There's apps that'll help you kind of build them out. There's uh, software that you just kind of plug in the language and you can uh, add the graphics in. Um, it doesn't have to be that complicated. You can literally draw them out on a piece of paper. Um, I'm a terrible artist, um, uh, but you can, you can do it that way. That's how they um, almost certain got their start. But the key is you're writing it um, either mostly from the kid's perspective. Some of the research suggests that if you put you in there, like you are going on the school bus or you are eating, that there's some kids that that works a little bit better for, but primarily you want to say I, right? You want the language to say I. So I'll give you an example. So here's a little bit of the introduction. I have to go to school each day. My friends are at school each day. Very person-centered. 
And then a descriptive piece. Sometimes when I get angry, I hit my friends. And then a little perspective. It's okay to be angry, but it's not okay to hit my friends. When I hit my friends, it scares them and makes them sad. And then the directive piece. Next time I'm at school and I get angry, I will not hit my friends. I will use my words and tell the teacher why I'm angry. And then kind of an affirmative sentence. When I don't hit my friends, they will feel happy and I will feel proud that I didn't hit them. So you see that's, that's a very structured social story um, with all of those uh, elements in it. Um, it doesn't have to be that structured. And like I said, there's tons and tons of resources out there uh, for this and even apps now where you can, because uh, a lot of kids are, you know, they're on their phones, they're on their iPads, they're on their notepads, um, and so they can uh, interface them uh, that way. What I want you to take from this is that there's absolute value in helping a, uh, a child or an adult uh, with autism with the words in their head, right? So that's what a social story is. It's trying to build sort of a script for them to follow the next time they're in a situation and then they use the, the, the graphics, the pictures, to illustrate it. So actual pictures of actual people work better than cartoon pictures for the most, for the most part because it's, a, it's just more accurate um, and uh, looks like real life a little bit more. There's a lot of, we've talked about video modeling, um, but what I really want you to hold on to is that idea of the voice that they have in their head, like the one that you've got, right? Like say your name's Max. So you'll be driving down the street thinking, you know what I really want is I want a sandwich. What kind of sandwich do I want? Um, a hammer, maybe? Like, no, I'm, I'm more like a turkey sandwich. You use this voice to plan to control your behavior like maybe you're about to go into a meeting and uh it's with your boss and you're a little bit nervous so you're talking to yourself you're like all right max everything's gonna be okay like uh, we're all right we're not in any kind of trouble here we're um for a lot of folks on the spectrum it doesn't work like that right it's not a sort of a useful tool it can be and you know, a lot of people off the spectrum frankly um so instead of being like your little buddy, kind of helping you out, it can, you're sitting outside the boss's office and you're like, oh my God, my boss hates me. This is, I'm going to lose my job. He's probably going to report me to unemployment. This is going to be the, uh, there's a lot of different terms for that. Catastrophizing is my favorite one that no matter what's happening, there's some voice in your head telling you like, oh man, everything's going to go bad right now. Um, and that is fairly common, especially for folks on the higher end of the spectrum, the Asperger's uh, folks. Um, largely... And this is somewhat theoretical because because they're not picking up accurate information from other people, right? They can't just, it's, it's hard for them to just look at somebody and say, oh, they're angry or they're sad or pick up on all those little cues. And so absent that, they tip towards the uh, catastrophic thinking. That person doesn't like me. Nobody likes me. I'm a bad person. Um, and so social stories and social narratives, same thing. Um, let's talk to the lawyers. Uh, help control for that a little bit, right? It gives you different language to use in the situations. Um, so like this, the example that uh, I just gave you uh, was a way for a kid to have language in his head so that, because um, he, this, this is just an example, but um, the, the language he may have in his head is that person's making fun of me. Right? And they may or may not, like frequently they're not, um, but it does, absolute bullying does happen. Um, and so, when I've been present <clears throat> and seen what they're looking at uh, and then talk to the kid, like I worked with one kid who was a, about 10, 11 years old and we'd be out on the playground. He's like, oh, I want friends, but nobody wants to play with me. They all think I'm stupid. Uh, and I thought, oh, we might have a bullying situation here, right? He's a little different. Like maybe, maybe he's uh, accurately sort of responding to the, the world. So I spent some time on the playground and by and large, like the other kids just ignored him, right? He didn't engage. He uh, wasn't very good at the games that they uh, were playing and so but if you talk to him you sit down next to him like hey how's it going like oh my god that, that girl over there she's she, she doesn't like me she thinks I'm like the way that I'm dressed is funny and I'm like wow they're not even paying any attention um, so we worked on uh, it was a little it was kind of a variation on the social story uh, it was a little something I, uh, I call behavior detected where you're like, well why do you think that right what is it that she's doing that's telling you that and then having him identify those things. And it, there wasn't anything to identify, right? It was all sort of the voice in his head. And so I'd say, well, looking at her, she's not looking at you. Um, she's talking to some other people. Her back is to you. Um, she's probably not talking about you or thinking about you right now. There's no evidence 
in my little behavior detecting um, <laughs> that she's talking about you right now. Um, and we'd go around and kind of do that. And everything, almost everything was uh, this very negative self-talk. And so we uh, um, did the behavior detective piece, and uh, you know, which is kind of a... Uh, goes in line with um, uh, some of the social narrativing. Um, but really, what social stories are, giving them a, uh, a script. Um, all of us, when we learn how to talk, we talk in scripts. And you can make a pretty powerful argument that we're always talking in scripts. Like, there's that's what's happening right now. There's I'm in uh, BCBA talking to parents mode, and so I'm using those scripts, right? Uh, uh, which... It could be true. Um, so highly encourage you to go to Get Answers Now, uh, GetAnswersNow.com, which is our website, where you can sign up. And in a really exciting turn of events over the last couple months, uh, we're taking insurance. Uh, we take insurance. We take Anthem insurance, and uh, I'm just about to be credentialed for uh, Medicaid here in Virginia. We're based out of Richmond, Virginia. I'll be rolling that out across some other states, but you can sign up and kind of find out about your eligibility. Um, you can check out our blogs. Our blogs are very popular. Uh, we've got some great BCBAs who've written some uh, really uh, um, good uh, informational pieces uh, for you. And uh, yeah, sign up to talk to a BCBA. Um, so check us out at getanswersnow.com or, like we said, get your fancy phone out. Go to your uh, Apple Play Store here. I'll do it right now. Um, the App Store, type in search. Type in, whoops, answers now. Hit search, and there you go. Click on that, download it, and away you go. Um, so uh, to wrap up, we definitely want uh, to you uh, encourage you to check out getanswersnow.com and also um, check out the AFIRM modules, A-F-I-R-M modules, uh, through the National Professional Development Center. Um, uh, there's one specific to social narratives and social stories. It's free to sign up. We're all about free stuff that we can give you. Um, we want. I really hope that you and yours are well right now. It is a pretty crazy time. And a lot of people are like, well, you just have to take care of yourself. This is easier said than done, and especially if you're a parent or a caregiver of somebody with special needs. It's uh, um, I was talking to a parent last night, uh, and uh, someone was like, well, you know what, at least things go by pretty quickly. And she's like, no, it does not go by quickly for me. It goes by very, very slowly, sometimes second by second, um, and is uh, uh, excruciating. Um, and that's just the truth um, for most parents. Uh, out there. Um, this is incredibly stressful and it's overwhelming and you can feel very isolated. Well, that's what we're here for. You're not alone. We've got you. We can cut down on you feeling stressed. We can cut down on you feeling uh, overwhelmed um, and we can help hopefully make this uh, crazy little journey a little bit less crazy. Um, well, thank you for your time. Check us out at GetAnswersNow.com. Uh, I am Adam Dreyfus, the Chief Science Officer and Co-Founder, and I appreciate your time.